Hi guys, it's me Chatter HD and welcome to this qualifying review for the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix. And hello to you guys who have missed out on my content so far this weekend. As I've been posting about my whole situation with my internet service provider cutting me off and all that stuff that has prevented me from doing the normal weekend schedule, I will get more into that once I properly get back on the internet later next week and I'll you know properly explain why I haven't been able to continue with the normal schedule. But in today's video, we are going to review qualifying for the Brazilian Grand Prix. And here are the results from the session. So, Max Verstappen on pole position, Sebastian Vettel second, Lewis Hamilton third, fourth is Charles Leclerc, fifth is Valtteri Bottas, sixth is Albon, and then completing the top 10, Gasly, Grosjean, Raikkonen, and Magnussen. Getting knocked out in Q2, Norris, Ricardo, Giovinazzi, Hulkenberg, and Perez. And then knocked down Q1, Kibiat, Stroll, Russell, Kubica. And surprisingly, as we we'll get on to later, Carlos Sainz. But first, let's get into the top teams. And first off, Mercedes, who were definitely not as quick as I think they were hoping to be in qualifying today. And really coming into the weekend, I think they would have thought they would have been right there fighting for pole position. But simply... In qualifying trend, Mercedes just don't have the car to get onto pole position. I think in the race, they definitely will have a better car and a car that is, let's say, more able to go for P1. Yeah, in qualifying today, they just didn't have a good enough car to really get pole position. They were about a quarter of a second away, really, from getting on pole position. So in qualifying trim. They just don't have the car, but in the race, I think they will absolutely have a good enough car to win. Lewis Hamilton, I think, to be honest, did the best he could. Valtteri Bottas also, I thought, did pretty well in terms of lap time compared to Lewis Hamilton. Even though Bottas was outqualified by Hamilton, I think he is also still looking good for the race. But yeah, Mercedes, qualifying has not quite gone to plan, but they're still looking good. Next up is Ferrari. And Sebastian Vettel qualifies in second place and Charles Leclerc qualifies P4. But because of his fourth power unit of the season, he will start the race from 14th on the grid. And that really, unless there's a safety car and a, you know, a crazy race tomorrow, today, depending on when this video comes out, um, Charles Leclerc is not in a position really to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. But Sebastian Vettel in second, I think... Ferrari will be a bit disappointed not to be on pole because I think it has become pretty clear in 2019 that Ferrari need pole position if they're going to have a good enough chance to win. So things are not looking great for tomorrow and I think Ferrari, considering their speed down the straights, they'll be a bit surprised they're not on pole position with Sebastian Vettel. So not looking great if I say going into the race tomorrow and I think Ferrari are definitely going to struggle because I don't think they have fixed their tyre problems and Sebastian Vettel even in his post-qualifying interview alluded to the fact that compared to Red Bull Mercedes they're not looking that great in terms of keeping the tyres together so I don't think Ferrari are in for a great race tomorrow and if you are a Ferrari fan then I wouldn't expect that much from Ferrari. I don't think, especially in the middle sector, they have a good enough car to really compete for the win or maybe even the podium as well. Next up, though, is Red Bull Racing. And for Max Verstappen, that's his second pole position of his career and of the season. And he absolutely deserves it. He's been clearly the best driver in qualifying. And clearly him and the Red Bull package working very, very well. And... If Max Verstappen can maintain the lead at the end of the first lap tomorrow, I think Max Verstappen will definitely win the race because he's looking out, of course, for redemption for last year's race where he really should have won the Grand Prix. And he does have the best pace and is in a car that over a race distance, as we know, is very good. So if anyone else other than Max Verstappen is going to win, they've got to do it, get you know, get an overtake done on the first lap because I think Max Verstappen is, without a doubt, the favourite to win the Brazilian Grand Prix of 2019. But Alex Albon, 
I think Alex, who of course has now been confirmed as the Red Bull driver, the second Red Bull driver of 2020, I think he could have done maybe slightly better, but P6, what is going to be P5 starting on the grid, considering the pace of the Red Bull car, if he can stay out of trouble on the first lap, I think Albon might be able to fight for a podium tomorrow. So not looking too bad for Albon, but of course for Red Bull, looking great on pole position. But now let's get into the midfield. And first off, Renault. What is there really to say about Renault? P12 and P14. Quite surprising for me because I thought considering their speed at the they lower downforce tracks this season, I thought Renault would be pretty good here. But they just don't have that much good raw speed when it comes to pace over a single lap. I think in the race tomorrow, they're definitely going to be quite a bit stronger. But... Another tepid, terrible performance again by Renault. They just simply are not good enough. Next up is McLaren. McLaren, I think going into this session, I would have expected not them to, you know, completely dominate the midfield battle, but I would have expected one car at the very least in the top 10, but we didn't get that. Carlos Sainz had an engine problem after running over a curb quite hard. The final exit curve, I believe it was. So Carlos Sainz has qualified in 20th. And of course, he'll start at the back. Probably with a new power unit, I'd imagine. And for Lando Norris, simply, he didn't do well enough and qualified in P11. And that is not that great, really, for McLaren. And going into the race tomorrow, even though they do have a fundamentally good car, I'm not sure they're just going to, you know, scream their way up to the front of the midfield. So. I think McLaren are in four. A tough race, but they can absolutely get a good points finish out of it. But it will be tough and it will require the drivers driving at their best if they're going to do it. Next up is Alfa Romeo. Kimi Raikkonen, one of the drivers of the day in my opinion. P9 in that Alfa car, which we know in the last few races has been very poor, very slow. And Kimi Raikkonen, around a track that he knows well, of course, and he has done well here in the past, put in a very good performance, P9. And I think Raikkonen, considering how he normally is on race day, I think Kimi Raikkonen will probably end up finishing in the top eight or top nine. And I think definitely Raikkonen is in for a points finish. It is, though, a shame that Antonio Giovinazzi made the mistake he made uh, at the end of Q2, because he was looking good also for a top 10 finish, possibly, but made that mistake at, I think it was turn 7 or turn 8. And yet, that, of course, compromised his session. But if Antonio tomorrow can cut out the mistakes, then I think Antonio might be able to be somewhere near the points. But Kimi Raikkonen definitely is going to be the point scorer for Alpha if they do finish in the top 10 next up is Haas and for once Haas are not terrible P8 and P10 I believe for Haas F1 if I remember correctly and it is actually nice to see this team not look absolutely pathetic because in the last two races they've basically been that they haven't really been at a level in the last two races before this weekend of competing with anyone really in the midfield and they've been closer to Williams at times so it's actually very very good to see Haas in a good position but as we know their race pace is terrible so the job is not done yet and they are in for a very hard race tomorrow if they're going to finish in the points because you've got Norris, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, uh, those three drivers behind them who will be able to start on whatever tyre they want to so going to be a very tough race for the Haas drivers, but at least in qualifying, they got back to how they, they used to be in 2018. Now we get into the final couple midfield teams. First off, Toro Rosso, and well done to Pierre Gasly. That is one of the best performances, in my opinion, of his entire career so far in Formula 1, because you cannot tell me that a Toro Rosso is expected to qualify in P7, considering their history at this track, and also considering how the power unit they have wasn't really expected to exactly go well this weekend. And I have to say, before I get into the next and last midfield team, very impressive 
from the Honda powered teams to be, you know, in the positions they are, you know, Max on pole and Gasly in P7. So looking good on that side of things, be a great drive by Gasly for P7. And considering how their pace is normally, I think Gasly can absolutely finish in that position. And considering that the two Renaults and two racing points are quite far down, if he can finish there and they don't finish in the points, then that is a big result for the team. Kvyat, P16. Daniel's never been really that good here, so it's not really a surprise. But yeah, Toro Rosso with Pierre Gasly are looking pretty good. And the last midfield team is Racing Point. And Racing Point this weekend just haven't had really any good pace, which is quite a surprise because normally when we come to lower downforce tracks like Renault this season, Racing Point tend to be in and around the top 10 and they just haven't been that way this weekend so that is a bit of a shame for racing point but we know at this track in interlagos you can overtake so it is possible for racing points still to come through and get some points in their critical constructors battle with toro rosso and Renault. but guys that's it for the qualifying review my next video should be out on monday afternoon which will either be a race review or an incident analysis of any incidents in the Brazilian Grand Prix. So make sure to pay attention to my community tab on my YouTube channel page, my Twitter and the Discord server for any updates as to what video is coming and when it's coming. So don't forget to keep across that. But until Monday and until we get to the point of reviewing what happened in this race, it's been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.